Hey guys, Jerry with 3D HP. We're out in the garage today and we're going to do an upgrade on my Jimitsu 4040 Pro right after this. Uh, welcome back everybody and here we go. Yeah, I haven't been out in the garage and I don't know, it's been quite a while since I was been out here working with my Jumitsu 4040 Pro that I have. I put my Makita router on it. I personally haven't had any trouble with any kind of flex in my Z-axis. It can cause a little bit of chatter and you can have issues. Some people have, some haven't. But I've got a hold of the same smart. They sent me out, they sent me out their upgraded Z-axis. Now this will work with the stock spindle that came with the unit or you can upgrade this to a 65 or a 69 millimeter mount to put on your DeWalt or your Makita. In my case I have the 69 millimeter mount. When I bought that they didn't have the 65 available when I got that off of Amazon. And then I put an adapter on it that I printed out. Printed out what you'll see in my prior video talking about this machine. And I put my Makita on it. But I was looking around on the internet and I'll link the man's video that I watched uh, right here on the screen and down below his name and channel and below in the description where I learned about this issue. I guess he was having trouble with one of the bearings I guess coming out of the z-axis and having a lot of chatter and a lot of flex to z-axis. But today in this video I'm going to have you guys come over here. We're going to get up close and personal with this machine. We're going to unscrew everything and we're going to put on the new heavier dutier heavy duty is the access and I'll show you some measurements and comparisons on how this one is better and more improved than the stock one that it came with so come on over here let me get the, to the camera close and we'll get going okay here's a close-up of the new unit which is going to be a lot beefier than the stock one here but we'll get this unbolted and I'll show you what I'm talking about Okay, there's four bolts holding this on. There's one here, here, and then another side in the same place. And then to take off this bracket, there's a bolt here, here, and then the same with the other side. And to get to the top, I'm going to have to crank that down. It's very nice these steppers have that wheel on them so you can manually move them around. Alrighty, I found a screwdriver. So now we got to remove this plate up top, fit your wires, your stepper on it, remove the two Phillips screws. Very small, don't lose them. Okay, that plate's loose. Z limit switch. Carefully wiggle out the plug. The small zip tie on the other side that's holding this red wire. You can't see it, but you put on my reading glasses so I don't cut it. Okay. And then we'll 
disconnect the wire on the stepper on top. Okay, that's completely out of the way. Now we can finish removing the bolt the bolts here. Okay. Now that we got those two out, we can kind of do a comparison here. Now, look at this bearing right here on the new one versus the bearing sides on the old one. See the difference there? A lot beefier. So both of the bearings are much larger. The bracket that mounts them in are much larger and the entire plate itself is a little bit taller. A lot beefier. So we'll take the new one and see to figure out about where I had the other one at. Got some notches on the back that'll hold it right in place. You can put your bolts back in. Now, if these should ever loosen up on you, I haven't had any issues yet. You can always put blue Loctite on them. Never red, ever. You can put blue Loctite and it'll hold them in place. But at the moment, I haven't seen a need. Every so often, when you do maintenance on your machine and you clean it up, Grab your Allen, check your bolts here and there, make sure things are snug. Get all four of them in before you tighten them down. Okay, set the wires back up. Grab the little plate in the back. And you can drop the Phillips screw down through the plate for the first one. Put your screwdriver in it, and then line it up and we'll get it going. Kind of be easier to start it that way. Okay, we no longer need this. Now we do have a good stepper motor on here, so we'll just keep this for parts. For some reason, we should ever need anything off of it. Uh, limit switch or a stepper motor, you know, keep your old parts. Just make a note on it or put a piece of tape on it, write on it what it is. Now that's the old one from what machine it came off of. Alrighty, now we got the four extra bolts. You can take the old one. Put the original mount back on it. That way it keeps everything together. Okay, the old one, it's 36 millimeters, if you can see that. Okay, 47 millimeters on the bearing. And then 36 on this one. So it's 11 millimeters thicker. That bearing block, this whole section, which in turn will make it more rigid. And the whole unit itself is a little bit taller. Okay, there I've got a flush at the bottom. And as you can see, one is just a little bit taller here. This new one's a little bit taller, a little bit beefier. And the bearing block is 11 millimeters thicker. Same stepper on it. So now you have an extra if you ever need it for any reason. And we're ready to rock. Well, that was a quick and easy upgrade. Like I say, if you have a Jimitsu 4040 Pro and you, it's one of your original units, you've had it for like a year and a half to two years, measure your bearing block. Measure the bearing right here. Is it 36 millimeters from here to here or is it 47 millimeters? If it's 36, you have the older unit, you should upgrade. It's more rigid. You'll have less flex when you decide if you decide to put on a uh, trim router or a larger spindle or something. So I highly recommend it. Uh, please, you know, thank you everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. <laughs> thank you to all my channel members here on YouTube. I'll show their names here on the screen. And until the next one, happy laser engraving everybody. Later.